Hello everyone, how's it going? In this video, we're going to be talking about Lucid, trading under the ticker symbol LCID on a NASDAQ. It's been one of the most speculated stocks on the NASDAQ exchange over the recent years. Some have said that it's the next Tesla, others believe that it's going to be a big bubble. Um, but everyone involved, regardless of whether they have faith in the long term, they sure hope to do well in the short term. And as one of the heavyweights in a burgeoning industry, Lucid is also one of the few companies that actually has a product rolled out. As time went on, the stock's price action and the investor's hype went through some huge, you know, stress tests or just stress. And some are still wondering if this company can be a bandwagon to hop on. So in this video, we're going to look at Lucid and to see if the company still deserves to have a place in your portfolio. As always, if you like what I do, please consider to drop a like, subscribe to my channel and check out the links down in the description. Before we begin today's video, I'd just like to state a brief disclaimer, which might clarify what this video is about and what it shouldn't be. So everything that I say here is my opinion. Um, they can be, you know, things that can inspire you in the decision making process, but they're certainly not supposed to be investment advice. And should be watched for entertainment purposes. They might be able to help you make better decisions, but to be honest, they should definitely not be the only thing that you watch. And by only things, you know, I mean both my videos and videos on YouTube. Like they shouldn't be the only thing that'll um, prompt you to to buy or sell a share. So most of my analysis is done right before like they're uploaded either the day before or a few days before. And sometimes by the time you see it, the price action no longer matches what you see on the chart. This is still okay though, because our goal is not to day trade stocks, but to trade the momentum and the swings in the days and weeks to come. Also, the analysis will try to cover the stock as comprehensively as possible when it's, a po when it's possible. So it's going to talk more about factors like more factors than just the latest news or price actions. For example, we might talk about the financials, the stock market trends, the long-term perspectives, and the shareholder behaviors. So these are all going to affect your decision on if you want to buy the shares, how many shares you want to buy, and at which price level you want to buy them, like you want to buy them at. So since most of my viewers would be watching my videos for the first time, it's very important to give them exposure to these issues um, every time that they actually tune in. So with that being said, let's begin with today's topic. Lucid went public in the height of the EV craze way back when, like by the end of 2020. And the reverse merging with the SPAC CCIV was very, uh, you know, hyped up by the market. People were excited about it. Um, and it would mark the beginning of a new era for many shareholders who want to purchase an EV stock at early stages. Back then, Tesla was making one new high after another. And it seemed by then that no one can stop that bullish tendency. And people were in a mindset to believe that the bull market is never going to end because it hasn't really changed for about 15 years ever since 2008 and 2009. The only true alternative for Tesla at that point was NEO. And the investors were looking for a domestic company with better oversight and perceived safety regarding their investment. Now, Lucid went public in 2020, and it was a company with already more than a decade of development behind the scenes as a private entity, and was able to prove to the industry that it is here to stay. We gotta remember that the market mood was euphoric back then with everything that has that is related to EV, and there seemed to be no like obstacle. That lies ahead of us. So the current price action is a major cooldown for the market, but also a potential entry for those who want to invest in Lucid instead of trading the swings. So the sell-off at the moment, in my opinion, we have yet to see whether it has like slowed down. Um, personally, I would say that like the seven dollars support level is an interesting region to look at. Um, regardless. You know, it's it's possible that this is not the end of it. And uh, after like two weeks of staying above the seven dollars level, what are the odds that it'll go to the six dollars level? You know, what about five? So for now, we don't know. 
certainly from like the the perspective that's longer than three months, I would say that the sell-off is well underway, and uh, we currently don't have enough information to say that it's over just yet. Regardless, um, over the past few days, despite the fact that the news has been like relatively negative on things, um, my feeling is things have stabilized a bit. And uh, is this going to be like the beginning of a new like bullish trend? Um, probably not. But this at least says that, um, you know, people are thinking about maybe getting in. So overall, the market is still very challenging for EV stocks and growth stocks in general. The main catalyst are like the interest rate hikes uh, from the Federal Reserves and also potential issues regarding you know, Lucid's production and uh, scaling up capacity. Of course, I've recently read that uh, Elon believes that uh, Lucid is not going to be in business within a few years. I can only say that time will tell um, whether Tesla will be in business within a few years. I mean, of course, a few years, the answer would be yes. But if you want to ask me, is Tesla going to be in business for the next 50 years, then we truly cannot tell. Okay, because my feeling is by then there might be new source of sources of technology coming out and it's going to be a whole new world to embrace. So regarding the long term tendencies, um, it's not difficult to spot that the bubble that we lived in has now completely bursted. The market doesn't want to blindly follow the hype um, that is, you know, that is with the EV stocks anymore. On one hand, it just doesn't want to persist a dream based on PowerPoints rather than, you know, actual results. On the other hand, it just can't because this narrative needs good environment in order to flourish. And right now, the environment is not that good. With chain like supply chain issues, the doubts about the flagship companies, um, the uncertainty about high interest rates, recessions, conflicts around the world, like there are many things that all plague um, the existing narrative to say that it doesn't actually work, right? So the market has long predicted that there's going to be a bearish market after the bull market from 09 to like 2022. And that most stakeholders believe that it's going to be a rough patch for at least a few years. The market has peaked twice in the past. And if the first peak was caused by like pure hype, the second one was triggered by the rollout of actual products. So Lucid remains a company that has investment value in the years to come. The main question in everyone's mind, though, is whether now is a good time to buy. You know, do you want to catch the falling knife? Maybe the knife is going to stop falling after you catch it or it's going to cut right through. So th this is why um, people are kind of iffy about buying when everything is down. The long grind to lower prices will probably cause the market trends um, to like keep going lower because the momentum kind of is a self-fulfilling prophecy on many levels. Um, it's probably caused by the economic trends rather than the company's specific fundamentals, even though the fundamentals are not great either, right? So we have to remember that uh, sometimes those tendencies can go on for a while and they don't necessarily have like an actual reason behind them. But this is okay because we have to live in those market conditions. And um, I think that this is what we're going to live with for the foreseeable future. When we take a look at the company's financials, um, my opinion is that its profitability needs to be improved, even though everything else has been growing. So it is encouraging to see that revenue has been increasing significantly. I think it doubled. It it exactly doubled. Yeah, from 97 in Q2 of 2022 to 195 million in Q3 of 2022. On the other hand, the cost of goods sold increased as well. So they went up from 292 million in Q2 to almost 500 million in Q3. So it grew slow more slowly than like the, the company's revenue, which is a relatively good thing, despite the fact that, you know, they're, they're still having a loss at the moment. Um, another element 
to observe is the operating expense. Those are probably the fixed costs, and over the quarter, they haven't really fluctuated like significantly off the volume, which can be a good sign for the company, but they still stand to lose about $700 million in Q3 alone, which is probably going to add up if we annualize the cash outflows from the operations. So speaking of cash, the cash reserves of Lucid is impressive, but if we think about it, given, the, given that you know it still has a deficitary operation, the fact that it's like between four to six billion dollars on the balance sheet would suggest that unless the operations pick up significantly in 2023, we're probably going to see like additional rounds of dilutions in a month to come. In terms of liabilities, the debt that Lucid took over over the past few quarters has gradually increased in size, but not significantly either. So it's currently around four billion dollars. Now, liabilities provide cash flow for the companies to keep the operations going. They might provide critical cash inflows when, you know, they're having difficulties either selling the equities or um, they just need something, they, they just need like a quick, quick fix. So they differ from equity sales in the sense that there's no loss of ownership, but there's the obligation to fulfill the cash outflows or the company would be liquidated for insolvency. So for the moment, I believe that the increase of debt level is normal. Uh, this is justified by the fact that they're currently scaling up. Now, it's definitely something that we got to keep an eye on because debt level is something that can cause the company to go insolvent. And whatever that we have put in the company's equity might go completely bust in the procedure. So some additional relevant aspects um, would concern like the current ratio and inventory turnover. The current ratio is how liquid the assets are and how easily they can meet the short term difficulties. Right now, it's still above one, but it's slowly going down. In other words, they're getting less and less liquid. Um, if something comes up, they might have like a weakened capacity to react. So the inventory turnover suggests that uh, they're having no trouble selling Lucid Air or their other models that may come up. But at the same time, you know, th those those cars are having issues. They're causing people to complain about it. Um, all these might put additional pressure on the price in the weeks and months to come. So now let's talk about the shareholders. About 70% of Lucid's shareholders are from institutions. And this means that people are not going to be coming in and out to sell like large number of shares like that. However, it doesn't mean that sell-offs cannot go on. It just means that if anything, they're going to be relatively more stable and less volatile than many other titles. So, um, you know, right now, I would say that it's, I would recommend people to, to buy Lucid, not to trade, but to invest. Because with 70% of institutional trade traders uh, who are holding the stock, they tend to hold long term. So this is why um, I would say that going, for, going forward, I, I would put the money in and just forget about it. That's going to be probably like the best approach. Of course, whether this is uh, necessarily the best price point to go, uh, we're, we're going to touch base on that in just a sec. Now, the last thing to look at is the short selling pressure. So there's a seizable amount of people selling, about 2 million shares, which, gonna, which is going to take, like I think, something like two days or three days to cover. With that being said, um, it's not you know numerous enough for people to, to buy in Lucid shares just for that. And to be honest, the price is getting like lower and lower. In other words, the profit potential of short positions is getting squeezed real hard. Now, once the, once the share price goes up, a lot of people would be compelled to redeem, in other words, buy back those shares and give them back to, um, to the broker in order to avoid further losses. Of course, this is... This is like how they would normally use it. Sometimes short squeezes don't necessarily go by the book 
or they don't necessarily go by your expectation. Uh, I mean, just take a look at MMTLP and you can tell that uh, people are, are still like confused about what happened. We're going to talk more about MMTLP in just a sec, but just know that, um, you know, strange things can occur if we rely on short squeezes. So my recommendation right now is to start buying a little bit, like little by little, uh, you can start accumulating a position in Lucid. And um, if it can manage to stabilize itself within the next few days, I would add a bit more. And if they go back to $10, I would definitely add in like the, the lion's share of my position um, in, in Lucid. So with that being said, by your position in Lucid, I really mean you have to watch out like the exposure that you give to each title. For a stock like Lucid, I would say three to 5% of maximum exposure is a good start. 